Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I've got a, a bin over here on the bench that I wanted to show you what I'm doing. So let's get the camera up close. Uh, and in this bin it always does make sense to get up close because there's not a lot to see in here. <laughs> it's a not very heavily populated bin. We, um, we did actually make a few guesses at how many worms occupy this system. And I came up with some sort of a rounded number, but in all honesty, I don't even remember the last time I saw as many um, worms as what we estimated to be in here. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I saw that many at once in here. And um, I guess the best luck we've had recently might have been the last check-in where we seemed to have stumbled across maybe about a half a dozen or so individual worms. That's right. <laughs> five or six. So it's certainly not a heavily populated bin, that's for certain. And the question came coming up, hey, if the whole idea here is repopulation with a small number of worms sort of bouncing back from um, near a uh, wipeout, then what can be done to optimize the possibility of these worms bumping into each other and possibly mating and having offspring and um, replenishing their numbers. So one of the ideas was to try to reduce the overall space in which the worms would live. So I didn't really reduce it much, but I did have plastic bubble wrap in this case covering this side causing recirculation of the moisture and you can see a lot of dampness right here on the top of the surface as opposed to this side of the bin that was covered only with a, a couple sheets of newspaper. And the, you know, the castings on this side are, are nice but um, basically the dampness is over there and that's what the worms typically are drawn to. So I'm sorry, I'm just noticing <laughs> something that we saw in some of my other systems too and the, the topic kind of went back and forth like, you know, what are those? And some people had suggestions for what they might be. Um, some people even said, hey, why don't you get up really close on these things and See if you can get a close-up shot, and then maybe somebody can actually help with the identification of what these are. Um, they're ugly little suckers. They're some sort of a, I don't know, a couple people suggested maybe the larva of beetles. Some people thought black soldier fly larvae, but I recognize these as not being that for sure, just based on their appearance. So I don't know, just figured I'd give a close-up, because that's what somebody said in the last video where I said, that if anyone out there knew what these were, then please chime in with an identification. Because um, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Beetle sounds like a good guess, though. But guess what? We're getting rid of them. I do seem to spot them here and there in um, certain systems that uh, consist of worms and materials that came from my garden from outside. And these, these um, castings that these worms live in right now did sit outside for a while for a period of time when I was really suspecting all these this casting material to be sort of tainted uh, actually the, the tainted material that I thought that the worms were inhabiting I did kind of get rid of that so I did actually I think pull the worms I'm trying to remember now gosh how did I even follow through with that process I, I think I must have I don't know it's weird, I'll have to go back to the video and try to refresh my memory. Because <laughs> frankly, I don't even remember how the heck I um, ended up collecting these together. But I basically, I had castings that I thought were bad, hauled them outside, left them outside for quite some time, and then one day I just got curious, started looking through the stuff, and found worms. And I thought it was even so terrible and uninhabitable that there'd be no possible way for anything to be living in this stuff, but it seemed to be fine for those worms that were inhabiting it and uh, I tried to see what I could do about restoring that population that was pretty much at the brink of being wiped out so whatever worms we do find in here are the only worms remaining in my worm colony that I can uh, track back to the original first tray of worms I ever received years and years ago so the attempt at trying to recover a worm population using only just a few subjects like I'm doing here is kind of a long shot um, but a little bit sentimental from my point of view too. It would be kind of cool if I can kind of experience a little bit of a bounce back here. 
So just a quick recap on where this bin has been. This bin has been, okay, so since we knew we had a very small um, number of worms to deal with, we figured that the, all the bedding that was surrounding them and whatever food I had put in there for them at the time would be sufficient for quite some time that we wouldn't have to keep checking in on them regularly. So right from the get-go, the, the bin was left to just go for two weeks, more than two weeks, 15 days, before we ever checked in on it. Uh, we made a few worm spottings because that's the one thing we usually try to do is spot worms when we're in this system. See what we can find. And the hope is usually that we're going to find as many as possible, but we never really see that many. So I got distracted by those little larvae, but we did see those two worms in the very beginning out here on the surface enjoying the moisture that had been collecting over on this side. Not too surprising that the stuff we just inspected on this side, the more dry stuff, didn't really produce any worms. Just some sort of weird insect larvae. <laughs> but as we start getting closer to this side, where the moisture was recirculating, my hope is that we'll begin uh, bumping into a couple worms. And it's also the side of the bin where we had placed a little um, treat for them, a couple chunks of melon. The other idea with the melon being over there was that maybe that would be the one place where all the worms would kind of come to all take advantage of that yummy meal and maybe have a little social sort of aspect to it as well. A little socialization between the inhabitants of this bin. Maybe leave behind a few cocoons, maybe um, generate a few offspring for us. I'm not sure what it takes to trigger worm mating. But my only hope is that it is happening in here, even though I have no clue of it. I mean, I should be maybe once in a while slowing down just a little bit to see if maybe by chance I could spot a cocoon or two. But I mean, it seems like such an off chance of that happening. I don't know if it's worth the effort or the time to try. But it would be kind of cool if just, you know, in the process of searching through this stuff, if I were to stumble on some cocoons. Naturally, if you're out there watching and you're seeing cocoons that I'm missing then I'd love to hear about it so please chime in so we could try this once again we'll try to quantify what we think the population in here consists of <laughs> by counting so we've found two worms so far and they were pretty close to each other so who knows maybe they're getting friendly with each other and now we're probably right where the melon pieces had been put. There's another one of these nasty little insect larvae. Yeah, I think you're probably seeing the other one too, just like I see it's right here. <laughs> I wonder how many of you spotted it. Um, so whatever, I probably am over overreacting at the presence of those little things. But I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the idea of having them around. Pretty easy to miss, but if you look carefully at the middle of this little chunk of paper, there's a little baby worm in there. And that, to me, seems like a really good sign. What do you think? This right here could be what I've been hoping for and looking for for some time now. <laughs> so here we go, one, two, three. But while I was looking right here, picking those other worms up, I um, spotted a little bit of movement, and it looks like another baby worm. So we have two adult worms, two baby worms. And that to me is a very good sign. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if I just breeze through this stuff so quickly and just don't allow enough time to, um, you know, let, let some sort of little, maybe if I bump into a worm who's just kind of relaxing and then needs a moment to sort of come to before it can maybe start squirming around and become easy, easier to see, maybe I'd be having better luck spotting worms in here. And I, I just wonder if I'm going to suddenly start seeing mirages. I'm going to start seeing little sticks and twigs all starting to appear as if they're also worms. But I mean, that's pretty cool because I don't really remember a lot of um, little tiny worms being seen amongst these. I think we did sort of have some adult worms. But right there, I mean, we've got more babies at this point than adults. We uh, found three babies so far and only two adults. So now we've evened it out. Now we've got three adults, three babies. 
Once again, I'm just kind of slowing down to maybe see if I can see anything squirming soon after creating a little bit of a disruption. I did actually come down here with a banana peel this time. Similar in nature that it's a nice, sweet, yummy morsel of food. And hopefully it'll, you know, create a little bit of a kind of a, a social scene over here on this side of the bin that we're going to continue covering in plastic. Continuing to try to keep this moisture that's in here circulating and keep things nice and damp and cozy. Because this will ideally be the part of the bin where the worms would probably be drawn to. And then that other side will allow it to remain a little bit drier, uh, lessening the chances of worms hanging out over on that end and becoming kind of sol solitary little hermits. I'd like these worms to kind of get social and get to know one another and um, start making some baby worms for me. So what do we have? Three and three? Is that now four or three? Four adults, three babies? So now we've got adults outnumbering the babies once again. But I'm really thrilled at just at the very fact that we've got babies cruising around in this material. And it's also kind of cool that finding worms today just doesn't seem to be as difficult as it has been in the past. So now we've got maybe, what, eight worms? We've definitely outdone our last check-in in terms of locating worms in general in here. And I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that we actually found babies, which, went, which I don't recall ever finding so far in here before. Very good sign. And if there's, you know, babies in here that we were able to see, chances are there's probably other ones that are so small still that we just didn't spot them. So I'm trying to remember now, is that number nine? Something like that. And we're not even done looking through all the material yet. And I also wonder sometimes if, you know, right in between certain things or maybe between the layers of corrugated cardboard, is it possible that there's little babies in there too. I would bet there probably are ones that we're not spotting because they're hiding. That's pretty cool, number 10. But 10 worms is still not even half of what we came up with as far as like a, um, a communal or joint estimate of how many worms occupy this bin. Because after I averaged everyone's guesses, I did come up with a number that's still more than twice 10. So if we were to find another dozen or so worms, then we'd probably be getting pretty close to the um, the estimate of how many worms we all guessed are occupying this bin. But, you know, if we find half that many, I'll be really excited because I'll feel like, you know, chances are I'm not going to always find every single worm. Chances are I'm going to breeze right by a bunch of them. Maybe even have ones that you guys could see from your angle and I'm just totally missing since I'm standing on the opposite side of the on the other side of the bin looking into here from another direction but um uh, if I could just find maybe one or two more worms that would be really cool but if I don't it's not a big deal but we did and here's one right there Oops. and that brings us to like a round dozen, I think, or whatever. And I bet you if we kept kept looking, we'd probably still find even more. But I don't want to go crazy ripping this whole thing up to shreds and disrupting their um, disru disrupting their mating and getting to know each other. I'd like to just allow that to continue. So I um, I did assemble a nice collection of different bedding bits here, all kinds of cardboard chunks, paper pieces. All kinds of stuff that I think would be really nice to um, have right underneath the plastic so that it all can get soaked with moisture and become a really nice cozy spot for the worms to hang out in. So I think we collected the majority of it. And the only problem is I, I probably got all the worms that I was stacking up over in this pile over here all submerging in the dry stuff and we want them over in the damp stuff. Uh, I always pull a, an idiot move like that <laughs> one step forward and two steps back whatever it's it's not dangerously dry out here but it is more favorable over on this side and it's not like the dry side's going to be tossed out or anything it's all staying here together 
it's just um, being left to become a little bit more dry, a little bit less hospitable for the worm so that hopefully they gravitate towards the other side and have a greater incidence of, um, you know, just bumping into each other and having little social encounters. So let's, let's get this whole shebang back to the way it was before we barged in on these little guys and disrupted their, their little feeding fest. Although, you know, I don't recall seeing any leftovers of either of those chunks of melon. And I mean, at least the cantaloupe, you would have found the rind or something, but I didn't see that, so that might be a good sign. Maybe there's um, a lot of babies in here helping with the process of breaking stuff down and nibbling stuff away. So I think we've got ourselves a nice little beginning here of a happy ending, so hopefully Hopefully we get to see some signs of that really kicking into high gear soon. And eventually it would also be nice to stop seeing those pesky looking little uh, larvae and whatnot. Oh geez, I put a st <laughs> I put them, I made a little pile of them over here on the side of the table and I almost forgot about them. So I better, you know what, I'm going to take a break here just for one second so I can get rid of them and then we can finish here. So I will be right back. Okay, so... It's always fun for some reason, I don't know why, <laughs> coming into this bin and like going like on a little scavenger hunt, seeing how many fun worms we could track down. Um, I guess just the anticipation of how are we going to find more, are we going to find less than last time. And it is kind of cool when you have a, a check-in like this where you do actually find more than you did the previous time. Um, quite a bit more. Probably twice as many this time. Maybe we just did a more... Um, methodical and thorough search this time than we did be previously. I think previously I was kind of searching here, searching there, kind of bouncing around a little bit um, um, kind of unorganized way, no sort of pattern or anything, so I probably missed spots where I could have found worms and not a big deal, just a curious thing. It's not a, an accounting thing, <laughs> but it is kind of fun to, all right, one more to get rid of. Brother. Oh, wow, look at that. They're all hanging out here on this paper. There's three of them. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Well, it'll be nice when I don't see any more of these either. The good, these ugly little suckers. I don't have to get them all at once. I'll get them all over time. Gotta be patient. All right, so I've got to uh, get this thing covered back up, similar to how we had it before, which is covering only half covering this side of the bin, keeping things nice and damp and cozy. While this side, still covered, has only a fairly faint little covering, just a thin little piece of newspaper with holes in it and everything, allowing for some drying of the material to occur. And I guess we even helped it out a little bit by blocking a little bit more evaporation just by placing these pieces of cardboard on here too. Um, I'm sure it wouldn't be a big problem if this stuff dried out even more quickly because the worms can easily make their way into something more comfortable pretty quickly. Not a long distance for them to travel, but whatever. I don't want to go through rapid, you know, big swings of having that stuff dry out and whatever. I just figured if it's just a little bit different, chances are we'll have worms probably more likely to be in there. And it does seem to work that way, so that's a pretty cool thing. I'm glad it's working, so... Um, that's it for today. I've got a couple things to clean up and put away, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Before I sign off, let me really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please uh, remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye now.